My name is Marlene Colburn. I'm a founding mother of the original Dyke March in Washington, D.C., and the Dyke March here in New York City with the Lesbian Avengers. I'm Naima Green. I'm an artist and photographer, and I'm working on a project called Pursuit, a deck of playing cards and digital archive featuring queer women, trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people. How did you get involved with the Avengers in the first place? I got a palm card at Pride, and I said, ooh, this sounds interesting. One of the reasons that we started the Dyke March is in Washington in 90, 92. Right? 92. Everything we saw that was lesbian related was at a bar. It was nothing else. Somebody said, well, why don't we do a, a march? Why don't we do a dyke march? Mm -hmm. We wheat pasted, we handed out flyers. We didn't know how many women would actually show up. Mm -hmm. I think we started at DuPont Circle, and when we got there, there were like thousands of women there. Wow. And we were like, holy shit. This is like really, this is like really cool. And that was the first Dyke March, I believe. I think it's really empowering that women say, okay, I'm gonna be out on the street. In New York City, we don't have a permit. We don't request a permit. We try not to work too closely with the police. Mm -hmm. The streets are ours, as far as we're concerned. And one of the great things I like about the Dyke March is every year, someone always walks up and says, Thank you for doing this. Yeah. When I think about what it means to be gay or lesbian right now, I hear more queer than anything else. That also resonates with me because I feel like it gives more space to me. But I also recognize that when I'm looking like, oh, I want to go to a lesbian bar, like those places don't really exist anymore. I think for me, it's like the studio becomes a place or my home becomes a place where I can bring in or invite in the community that I want to be around. Because I think that it is harder and harder to find lesbian-only spaces. It's always been hard to find lesbian-only yeah. spaces. Yeah. I remember when I was coming out, I used to wander the village and the Women's House of Detention was where the Jefferson Library Garden is now, mm -hmm. that little triangle. Mm -hmm. And you could hear women yelling out. And it was really funny because those are the only lesbians I knew with the women <laughs> in the Women's House of Detention who were yelling yeah. out the windows. Yeah. And I would wander the street saying, well, there's gotta be lesbians elsewhere too. But you didn't know where the bars were. You, it was all word of mouth. I mean, you, if you walked by the Duchess, you knew that was a lesbian bar. Or if you walked by Bonnie and Clyde's, which was next door to a fire station. And at the time, the firemen were not quite as adapted as they are now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they would turn the hoses on women as they, as oh, they wow. went by. I thought it was really important to find those spaces, but I gotta tell you, the lesbian places that I did find were hidden away. It was after Stonewall, but no one was engaged in any sort of activity, and that included holding hands if the cops came in, mm -hmm. because they would bust the place up. If they didn't bust you, then they would bust the place up, and uh, the place would have to start again. And I saw that happen a couple of times, but I also found uh, lesbian bars, not lesbian bars, because they weren't really bars, they were like, rented spaces that groups of women would, would rent. And I remember my first date, I think with my first girlfriend, I showed up and they said it was a private party. Hmm. I was like, private party? What the hell are you talking about, private party? Well, of course, everyone who's black who showed up at the door was told it was a private party. Everyone who was white was allowed in. And, and my girlfriend at the time was white. And she was really pissed at me because I was two hours late because they wouldn't let me in the space. And I thought, oh, okay, so there's this mm -hmm. and there's that. It dawned on me, we need lesbian spaces just like we need people of color spaces. Mm -hmm. The opportunity to be genuinely who you are without having to answer to anybody. Or like, why, why are you doing this? So, yeah. yeah, explain yourself. Yeah. Like, it's like, why the hell do I need to explain myself exactly. to you? Yeah. I think for me, it's more about who I saw as a lesbian or as a queer woman was always a white woman. And so I think that's where the conflict appears for me. And so really wanting to revise that. You know, I'm so excited to, to meet you because I want to know more about your history and who were you spending time with, trying to get deeper insight into what queer communities looked like for black women. I read last year, um, Sister Love, the letters between Pat Parker and Audre mm. Lorde, and also want, having so many questions about what their communities look like. And so I think part of building the archive and making Pursuit is also about creating a visual representation of the women and the people 
that I see and wanted to see when I was growing up. I think even through Googles, it's like what I'm look, what I see when it comes up is always majority white women. Well, Google has a tendency to do that. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, they're yeah problematic in all yeah. the other ways. And also thinking about like. If you don't party, or if you don't drink, or if you don't smoke, where do you go, and where do you find community, and, and how do we create spaces beyond the bar? You have an yeah. activist group. Sometimes I'm really shy, so I'm like, through photography I can spend time with you, and I can have a one-on-one -on -one experience and feel both like I'm working, I'm like looking and observing, but also that I can be really present with whoever I'm with. I've created a, a community and families through the work that I do. I, I, I think, like, however um, you choose to be an activist, being a, a, a visual activist mm -hmm. is just as important as being out there on the streets right mm -hmm. now with your fist raised in the, mm -hmm. in the air. In fact, it might be longer standing than mm -hmm. those of us who are out on the street because there's there's a visual context to what you're doing. Yeah, it's been such a pleasure. I really do want to honor the work that you've done and are, continue you. to do, and, and thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it.